Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend, a 10 day period in which the jet stream becomes stronger and then flatter. Here's a quick snapshot to show what I mean by that. Now this is the jet stream and the surface pressure at the time of recording. A couple of things to point out, higher pressure to the east, lower pressure to the west of the UK and this very loopy or amplified jet stream running across northern Europe and the Atlantic. If I fast forward to the start of next week, however, you'll notice a number of key differences. One is that the jet stream now runs west to east. It's a much flatter, less loopy shape. Whilst another difference is that higher pressures to the south rather than the east, lower pressures to the north rather than the west. And that change in the bigger picture will have important consequences on the UK's weather through next week. But I'll go into those in a moment and suffice to say for the time being we've got this loopy jet stream, this highly amplified airflow that is leading to a number of interesting things across the UK. One is that we've got very mild southerly winds, another is that weather patterns are slow moving. So many parts of the UK on Wednesday are wet and those areas of rain are slow to move eastwards, drier in the east at first but then by Thursday, those outbreaks of rain are clearing through finally and actually it's a fine start to the day for much of the UK. Sunny spells, just a few showers into Northern Ireland, Western England and Wales. Otherwise, it's a little fresher out there, not quite as mild, 18 or 19 Celsius. But I suspect for many a more pleasant day because of the increase in sunshine and decrease in rain. Then on Thursday evening, many of the showers fade away and clearing skies with a cooler airflow across the country will lead to temperatures dipping in the single figures, so a fresher night compared with recent nights. But a few mist and fog patches will be around first thing Friday. However, many places will start the day sunny and with light winds before this area of low pressure moves in through the course of the day. Now the colours here are indicating wind gusts above 50 miles an hour. The key is on the right here. And what you can see is that as that low pressure moves in during Friday day, western parts of Scotland and some other areas through the Irish Sea, for example, parts of Northern Ireland, could experience in excess of 50 mile an hour wind gusts. Peak winds are likely across the far northwest of Scotland, 60 miles an hour or so on Friday. Now these winds are coinciding with spring tides. Spring doesn't refer to seasons when we talk about spring tides, but the oscillation between spring tides and neap tides that happen uh, associated with the moon phase. And later this week we're in high tides, spring tides, and as a result these strong winds could cause more coastal impacts than you'd expect with say neap tides or uh, somewhere in between. So yellow warning in force, strongest winds northwest Scotland on Friday and that's where the wettest weather will be as well. Some heavy and persistent rain for western Scotland, northern Ireland, a few drifts and drabs of rain across the rest of Scotland, England and Wales, thickening cloud through the day, although East Anglia and the South East are likely to get away with another sunny day before the cloud thickens later. 17 or 18 Celsius in the South East, 15, 16 further West, not feeling as pleasant though as the wind and rain arrive. Now the main area of rain does move West to East, but again it's slow moving because of the amplified jet stream rather than sending it west to east quickly. That amplified jet stream means that the rain could develop pulses of heavier and slow moving areas of rain and could lead to large rainfall totals, 50 mils or so over western hills, for example, on Friday and into Saturday. And it is going to be slow to clear across the Midlands, East Anglia and the southeast at first on Saturday. And uh, elsewhere across the country, we do have brighter skies following a few showers into western Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales and the southwest. It's going to feel fresher here at 16 or 17 Celsius, pleasant enough with the uh, winds easing through the day compared with the end of Friday. But the afternoon, we've still got some of that rain lingering in the southeast. Like I say, it is slow to clear. Then late Saturday, this low spins up virtually from nowhere and it's a deep low. To understand where this comes from, we need to rewind the clock. We don't need to rewind it too far, just a day or so. And we discover that this low starts life near the Azores as a relatively shallow and flat feature. Nothing of great concern at this stage. But during Saturday what happens is that the jet stream picks it up. Initially the low is on the warm side of the jet stream and the jet stream just helps to steer it 
towards the UK. But then watch what happens later Saturday. The low just ends up on the cold side of the jet stream and that's the area where these lows can spin up very rapidly. Look at all the isobars being added to the centre of that low. It ends up as a very deep area of low pressure. Now thankfully for the UK it looks likely that the deepest part or the most rapid deepening phase of the low occurs uh, out in the open ocean and away from the UK. Also the very strongest winds that we're likely to see associated with this low remain out in the open ocean. But winds are going to increase late Saturday and into the start of Sunday across the UK, especially western and northwestern parts. And you can see here again on the wind gust graphic that widely by the start of Sunday we can expect wind gusts in excess of 50 miles an hour, in some places 60 miles an hour, and for some of the most exposed spots of the northwest, 70, 80 miles an hour are possible but there's some uncertainty on the precise nature of the wind gust because it's still a few days away. Different computer model projections have slightly different tracks and depths of this area of low pressure. Remember it deepens really quickly and it goes very deep very fast so getting a handle on it a few days ahead is still quite tricky and still that leads to uncertainty about the exact strength of the winds. But what looks most likely, what is a common theme throughout the model output, is that it's northwestern parts of the UK where we like to see the strongest winds and the biggest impacts from this low. And again, we've got those high tides to think about, so coastal impacts are likely. That's why there is this yellow warning for wind across the north and northwest of the UK. But it's likely to be refined over the next few days. And so, uh, yeah, keep uh, up to date with Met Office output and the Met Office web pages and app and so on for the updates on this as we get more detail on the track and depth of the low in question. Either way, Saturday starts off with sunny spells and showers. The most frequent showers will be in the west. And actually, it's not a bad afternoon with generally light winds and temperatures of 16 or 17 Celsius away from any of those showers. But watch how quickly the area of low pressure sends its rain in. After dusk on Saturday, quickly becomes wet and windy across western parts of the UK. The rain then sweeps east during Sunday itself. Now that rain does move through quicker than Friday's rain, but it is likely to be um, slow moving in some parts of western areas, or at least heavy at times, so perhaps 50 mils on Sunday afternoon. But, uh, or at least through Saturday and into Sunday. Now, the strongest winds will be affecting western Scotland and there'll be some heavy rain there throughout Saturday night and into Sunday, as well as those strong winds. Temperatures of 16 or 17 Celsius, not feeling very pleasant though with those strong winds. Sunday sees that low move away and into Monday it is heading into Scandinavia and the a uh, very fast flowing jet stream segment is also moving away into the continent, which with a less strong and flatter jet stream following for the UK. This is the most likely weather pattern for Tuesday. And it shows um, westerly airflow, high pressure to the south, lower pressure to the north, and temperatures in the low to mid teens with the most unsettled weather for northern western Scotland and Northern Ireland, outbreaks of rain or showers. Fast forward to Wednesday and this is the most likely weather pattern. Very similar but a bit more of a southwesterly airflow than a westerly airflow. Again the most unsettled weather towards the northwest, drier and less windy towards the southeast and temperatures not far from average for the time of year. And that uh, westerly or southwesterly pattern continues to dominate throughout much of next week. This shows the most likely weather pattern for the next 14 days. The light blues are southwesterly uh, weather patterns, which as you can see, make an appearance frequently through next week. But increasingly, we're also likely to see these dark blues, which are the westerly weather patterns. So it's likely to stay unsettled through next week. In other words, low pressure in charge, that's what these blues mean, and uh, westerlies or southwesterlies. Then, towards the end of the week and beyond, these reds and oranges make an appearance and they are weather patterns associated more with higher pressure. But, as you can see, much more uncertainty, a much greater number of these weather patterns come into play. So, 
what I would say is that uh, overall, because of that change in weather patterns, temperatures approach the average for the time of year. The average line here for a centre part of the UK is shown in red. Average overnight temperature shown in blue, that's the line. And then these boxes show the most likely temperature each day and each night. And as you can see, through next week, after a mild spell, those temperatures are likely to trend back towards average because we see those westerlies return rather than southerlies. So overall, westerlies or southwesterlies throughout the uh, upcoming week, changeable but always wettest and windiest towards the northwest, drier and less windy towards the southeast, and then just those subtle hints of higher pressure later, but really that's beyond the 10-day period, beyond the 26th of October we're talking about. And of course, we'll keep you updated right here at the Met Office on all of that. Bye-bye.